Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, Greg Anthony here, and glad you're back on the Investigative Journal on this April 13th, 2017 day on our calendar. And as I said yesterday on my show, I have Bert Krantz of the Alamo Ministry with me. And uh, for those of you not familiar with this case, let me just say this, that it's a, it's a stark example of how our government has come down behind the scenes on Christian ministries while at the same time they're allowing basically uh, radical Islam to grow and fester in this country. Uh, I'm trying to make it pertinent, but this has been going on for over 40 years. And as I talked on my show last week with uh, Deborah Andrasek of the Alamo Ministry, we centered on how uh, this was a three-prong approach to take this ministry down. First, they had to frame Tony Alamo which I'll get to uh, in a minute. We have a a letter that I have from one of the agents, the undercover agents who was hired to frame him. And uh, he was not allowed to testify at the trial. That is unacceptable. Secondly, they decided at the same time to take over 35 or 40 children from this ministry without ever proving child abuse. And thirdly, as we speak today, the raid, the final raid, took place in 2008. They're still filing lawsuit after lawsuit to take away property that these hardworking Christians worked for and used as a base for their ministry to spread the word of God. Bert Krantz, you're with me today, and I know you want to get into this subject regarding how they took your children away and what they did at Wellspring, which is another name for the Cult Awareness Network, and you have some information you want to tell us. So go ahead, Bert. Go right ahead. Greg, uh, thanks for having me on. Today, I wanted to go in. I I was listening to the interview you did with Debbie, and uh, she did a great job, and you also, in doing a little research on the Cult Awareness Network, but there was some areas that I would like to supplement, and uh, I know how she went into... The Cult Awareness Network was in a full operation back in the early 1970s when they would kidnap people out of our church and other churches, and they would uh, isolate them, take them, and lock them uh, into places, isolate them, and browbeat them, and uh, even to the extent of, of rape was involved. And so... Uh, yeah, I called it. I, if I called it. Even my headline was... It's a Christian concentration camp. Go ahead. Right, right. Well, they were also deeply involved. They were the experts that were involved in the Waco massacre. And uh, I know to a lot of people uh, that are listening today, that's ancient history. But uh, And there's been a lot of things uh, said and written about that that is mostly propaganda. If you do the research into it, I'm sure you are aware you know that, that those people did not commit suicide. That that raid was uh, a very deadly attack by the United States government. It was uh, back in February and April of 1993. It resulted in 86 people dying, including 24 children. So, uh, uh, Attorney Jan. Jan- General Janet Reno took uh, she took uh, the blame at the time, and then she was kind of fighting with Bill Clinton over who should take the blame. But no one was ever prosecuted. No government agency was even reprimanded about it. So, uh, but the uh, she took uh, responsibility for the decision that the FBI took in April of 1993 to what they called compress the perimeter around the church and what that meant was they drove in and knocked the walls down with tanks and they shot in this uh, lethal gas cs gas which was banned by the geneva convention that is flammable and also that is uh it actually incapacitates people so they shot this in with all these 
uh, children in there. And she said that she was relying on the advice of her experts. She said that over and over again throughout the, what was it, 51 days of this siege. So uh, the, the raid was initiated by the BATF back on February 28th of 1993, and they were triggered by a campaign conducted by the Cult Awareness Network. And it was, it was uh, also, they went as far as to Australia to get their people to help um, execute this. But with their, uh, now, can, as you So, know, uh, just to be clear, you're saying that the government used the Cult Awareness Network for justification of using this lethal force on basically Christians who are no threat to our country, correct? Exactly. That's exactly right. Now, there, you know, of course, Kent's an organization, even then, it had been long in operation, an organization of kidnappers and brainwashers. And uh, I would contend that they were really uh, raised up by the government for this very purpose. And they, because they gained all their influence and made all their money by convincing law enforcement officials and the general public in the United States that it was, that the place is filled with mind controlling cults and to gin up fear, you know, against all these cults. And also they were linked in with an organization back then called the uh, American Family Foundation and also with the Anti-Defamation League, which if you look into their background, they were long ago, possibly even instituted, but definitely infiltrated by the Jesuits and the Vatican. You can go to any Anti-Defamation League office and they're in the same office buildings with the, the uh, diocese and the, and the Catholic Church. So uh, together with them, the, uh, they, use, they use the same methods uh, against the people that they call cults, such as, you know, isolation, sensory deprivation, threats, bribes, intimidation, rape, physical abuse. And uh, so then when they, when they coerce these people out of their uh, churches or different organizations that they're in, then they take the confessions. They convince them of the badness of the people that they were involved with, and then they, uh, they get them to write things that are negative about these organizations, and then they take these to the law enforcement agencies to convince them that they need to do something about them. See, and that that ammo was used by Can to deploy the ATF against Koresh and the French Davidians back in 1993. Okay, so they fed all the ATF people these uh, fish these stories from the deprogrammed former members, the brainwashed or brain dirty former members, uh, warning that Koresh was going to. Uh, do some kind of a Jonestown massacre or an armed confrontation with authorities. You remember these things were coming out, Greg. Right. When uh, back when they were first doing it, this is the kind of things they were saying. This was coming from the Cult Awareness Network. Some uh, like they were going to maybe attempt some uh, assassination of a public figure or just attack the local uh, people in Waco. So uh, the ATF bypassed the local authorities in Waco. Because the local authorities knew that none of these things were true. They knew Koresh. They knew these people. Many of the, uh, like the sheriff, you, you've heard the testimony of that sheriff. Right. The, uh, that he, he knew that the, all this stuff was false. So instead, they just launched this Gestapo attack on the church, and it resulted in the killing of uh, four ATF agents and uh, several of the Branch Davidians. And then the, uh, they justified their actions referring back to these profiles that had been given to them by the cult awareness network as if that was the evidence you see you see the um the similarity of how they use that and in, in the way they use the testimonies in tony's trial it's a identical techniques so uh i think we need to understand though how did the cult awareness network morph into wellspring is it the same organization essentially now this yeah, it is. I'll get into that in a little bit. I'm okay, go ahead. What they did in Waco, and then and then uh, the way that that happened is they were they were caught red-handed, and they were uh, they went through a a long trial, and they they were made bankrupt, and so they had to come back as a new organization. 
Okay, but go, we'll get into that in a minute, but get back to the Waco similarities to your case. Okay, so the, uh, then the FBI took over, and they also relied on the experts, right? The experts. They had it in quotes, you know, the experts. And these experts were all like people like you mentioned the other day, Cynthia Kisser, and then these other people uh, that were involved with the Cult Awareness Network. And they were influencing... Uh, their psychological profiles of the people, you know, the negotiators during the siege. And they were just relying on them and the ADL. And uh, the tactics that they used were the exact opposite of what would what you would use to promote a peaceful resolution to that standoff. You remember they were playing these uh, noises of uh, Tibetan monks chanting and rabbits being killed and uh, Nancy Sinatra playing my uh, these boots are made for walking so loud that they, they were depriving them of their sleep. They had them totally cut off from communication. You know, you remember all the different things that they had done. And then they had the tanks running around and the, the tank drivers mooning them. And I mean, just all kind of things going on there, intimidating these people running over their vehicles their kids' toys running around the yard in tanks. So uh, this isn't exactly conducive to coming to a peaceful resolution. Uh, so, okay, there was no no evidence of child abuse. Janet Reno was always saying down through the siege that there was child abuse. They were coming in there because of the children, but the FBI later had to uh, back away from that, and they had to deny it. Uh, even uh, William Sessions, not Jeff Sessions, but the uh, FBI director back then, William Sessions, said there was no information confirming any child abuse. The only evidence they ever presented on child abuse was from the CAN, Cult Awareness Network. That's where their evidence for child abuse came from, from the confessions that they had gotten from the people that they had deprogrammed or brain dirty, brainwashed. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, uh, the attorney that won the case for the Branch Davidians, he claimed that there was no pact for suicide, uh, that uh, Koresh wanted to come out, and that, uh, but the, the negotiators from the outside kept doing things that were making it to where the people were afraid to come out. And then on that final day, they, uh, what is it that Reno said? They compressed the perimeter. They came in with them tanks. They put that CS gan, uh, gas in there, banned by the Geneva Convention again. Uh, they couldn't even use that against Saddam Hussein. They couldn't use it against uh, Assad or in Syria. It's just like what they did in Syria. In fact, the reason we bombed Syria, they poured yeah. that kind of stuff chemical warfare against these people yeah and you see and that, that's that's so interesting because people forget because of their media campaign to make this group out to be these people that were going to either destroy their own people or they were a threat to america and they use gas on them killing these people and nothing was ever been done no one's ever come to justice in a sense and now what we do is we condemn assad well, whether he did it or not, for doing the same thing our government did on our own people, Christians. Exactly. They, uh, that gas incapacitated and disoriented, uh, disoriented so many people inside that house. It was impossible for them to escape the fire. And the fire was, and it was also flammable. So, like, they started the fire, and then, and then after it was all over, and it was this big mess, and nobody wanted to touch it, Janet Reno came out. And uh, she took the rap on it, but the Cult Awareness Network started to cover up its role. You can find articles from back then where they start criticizing the government, you know. But it was the... Uh... What's that? I'm sorry. It was uh, the... Uh, they should be prosecuted for murder, really, and kidnap, rape, pillage, all the different things that they do in violation of everybody's civil rights. These people, and it's all done undercover. People never even hear about the Cult Awareness Network or Wellsprings. So uh, our, now our church, you know, the, a lot of people will look back on that and say, well, they had guns, you know, and, and, and 
believe me, uh, Christians, uh, we, our church does not believe in guns. And it's manifest. You know, Jesus said that those that live by the sword will die by the sword. And obviously God didn't come down and protect these people. He allowed this to happen. These people were relying on weapons. And that's not right. You know, I disagree with that. He was uh, disillusioned or he had some very, very misguided Christianity. But m many professing Christians today are very misguided because of all the false prophets and false doctrines in our time. We don't use that kind of weapons. You know, our weapons are not of this world. We use uh, the weapons of the sword of the spirit. Uh, Christians are, uh, our weapons aren't carnal, but our weapons are to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we bring into captivity uh, the very thoughts of our hearts to the obedience of Christ. But anyway, I, I got most of this information from an article that Pastor Tony read, very wrote very shortly after the Waco debacle back then in the 1993, and it was called uh, the Waco Massacre. It was a probe into the experts behind Waco. And he also wrote some other articles. Let's see, I got them written down here. I didn't go have time to go through them. But they were, um, okay, where'd it go? Uh, there's one entitled Conspiracy and also The Setup. And there's other ones on our website also. You can go to alamoministries.com. Okay, so then the Cult Awareness Network went on for years doing this type of thing. And they eventually uh, were sued by a member of uh, the Church of Scientology and they lost that lawsuit millions of dollars and it bankrupted them so the government had to raise them up back up in with a different name a whole different corporation but it's the same people and in, in a lot of those people from the uh, cult awareness network did time for their rapes and for their false imprisonments and so what they do now is they have a retreat and you mentioned on that program that retreat is like in the middle of nowhere it's like what 300 acres and you have to go down dirt roads to get to it yeah, it's outside of albany ohio okay go it's ahead like in the middle of nowhere and it's like a concentration camp people can't escape from there and judges actually uh order people to go there and get the program from their quote-unquote cults so that's how they changed their name greg and that and then Going back to uh, our case, where they got these girls, the FBI sought them down and brought them over to this wellspring, and they put them through that program, and they used that testimony to condemn Pastor Alamo. Right, right. Go ahead, go ahead, continue. Well, well that was just, um, you know, a, a little supplement to what you went through with Deborah, and I know that you, you did a great job in explaining the Cult Awareness Network, but I thought that this auxiliary information would be of great interest to anybody that wanted to really know about the Cult Awareness Network. Right, so let's go, you know, we got about six minutes on this side of the break. I wanted to go back to the similarities of what they were doing at Waco. And what happened to you guys in 2008, finally? Now, it's no secret that uh, the FBI, the BATF, and all of these agencies were coming down on you guys for not only uh, in 2008, but for, God knows, going back to the 70s and 80s. And it, to me, it shows a systematic approach. When you look into Wellspring today, and even the Cult Awareness Network, they were primarily bringing these Christian groups, these fringe groups, as they say you guys are, uh, basically to get rid of you. And really, the point I wanted to make was, I think it's important how this is depicted in, in, the, in the media. First of all, we have Catholicism, which everybody thinks is like uh, the cream of the you know, the cream on top of the pie of Christianity, and you have these rogue priests going around, and that's not that important, right? You know, raping kids and doing all this all over the world. Then you have typical Protestantism depicted as true Christianity, and then you have 
true Christianity depicted as cults, and they got to get rid of you. Can you tell us what really this is all about? I mean, it seems to me as if they're more concerned about getting rid of you than they are even radical Islam today, who they're allowing to openly walk in the, you know, and, and protest, protest with guns on these villages that Islam has created. And I've talked about them in a place called Islamburg, New York, is one of the maybe 30 or 40 that have been pointed out by people researching this, where the government does nothing. They allow these radical groups to walk around saying death to America, probably fester all of, you know, this radical Islam in our country while they're attacking Christians like you. Explain that to people, because to me, it makes absolutely no sense if you don't understand the Vatican's true intentions. We've got about three minutes on this side of the break. Go ahead. Well, since, the, uh, since Tony Alamo was saved back in the early 1960s, he's been preaching the gospel and winning souls to Christ. He won a lot of them out of the Catholic Church. He won a lot of them out of drugs. He won people from every walk of life. But the difference is that uh, they didn't enter into some Protestant church or some Catholic church, but they entered into the reality of salvation. And you cannot control, you can't have a one-world government if, you're, if you have these uh, rogue people, they would call them, because they are uncontrollable by a satanic forces, because uh, they're fearless, because they fear God, they fear no man. God said... Uh, I'll forewarn you whom you shall fear. Jesus said this, don't fear him that can kill your body, but kill, fear him that a, after he kills your body is the one that decides whether your soul spends eternity in heaven or hell. So these type of people are not going to be uh, brainwashed or duped or just uh, mind, uh, you know, uh, group thought into doing satanic things. And so... Uh, the Vatican uh, leading the New World Order, using government agencies. This is a long thing to say in a couple of minutes. Greg, That's okay. We got subject. another half hour, so go ahead. Yeah, it's a big subject because uh, Tony Alamo is a, a man that they feared greatly because he was winning so many people to true Christianity, and uh, it had to be stopped. And it's and it's really around the world. You can look at the revival that happened in the United States. Uh, they called it the Jesus Movement, and, and, but it sprung from there into all the different nations. And I tell you, it got the attention of the Vatican, very much so. Right, and you know, I remember even, uh, we talked about this before, but even statements by uh, Pope John Paul II stating that the biggest problem in America are these fringe Christian groups, so to speak. Exactly that aren't coming under the cloak of the Mother Church. And the, he said this, if they don't do that, we have ways to make that happen. And I think uh, what they did to your ministry is a perfect example. And I want to get into uh, you know that in the second, hour, in the second half hour. But uh, in the last minute here, uh, it's interesting that Wellspring now is doing the same exact thing the Cult Awareness Network did and I wonder exactly what's, after your ministry, what they're up to today. Have you heard anything from any people who've uh, talked about that? No, you haven't. And, you know, they, they stay in the background very much. And we're so aware of them because they've been attacked in our church for so many years. But many people might not even be aware that it's happening, you know, because they are, as you're saying, on the under the orders uh uh, ultimately from the Vatican, trying to root out the very last uh, vestiges of Christianity in the United States. And it's interesting that you mentioned Clint, uh, that we have to, uh, that, oh, I'm, I forgot what you mentioned, but it brought to my mind, and people will, will remember, that uh, Clinton, right after the Waco massacre, he came out and said there are uh, more of these cults you know, out there. Okay, and, Bert, hold that thought because i got to take a break real quick here. And we'll be back with Bert Krantz of the Alamo Ministry in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. 
When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn, the Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crosstheborder.org. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening The following, following program, program is legally dangerous, dangerous and off limits by the by Supreme, Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit command, command, but stand all people. people. Listen, listen up, 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 and you, and you may, may just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, glad you're back on the Investigative Journal on this second half hour of my show on this April... 13th, 2017, day on our calendar. My guest is Bert Krantz of the Alamo Ministry, and I'm sure people who listen to my show are aware of what happened to this ministry. Those of you who aren't uh, aware, go to a website that I started called freetonyalamo.com and read about it. I put a capsulized article at the top so you'll get a picture of how Christianity is being attacked in this country. And it's no secret that the media does not want to touch this story anymore and they don't want to touch really what's going on to Christians all over the world and when I talk when I mean Christians I don't mean Catholicism I don't mean uh, 
you know, the Lutheran Church, who this year will get in bed with Catholicism on their, I don't know, what is it, their four or five hundred year anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. And basically, this, this, you got to watch this, folks, in 2017. This, this meeting of the Lutheran Church and the pro and the and Catholicism is really geared at changing what happened in history. They want to whitewash what really took place to Christians who believed in the Bible, and they want to make the Vatican look as if uh, they did nothing. And really, that is geared towards the, the the few remaining people in the world who believe that you don't have to go to man's traditions or the Vatican or any of their subsidiaries, and I call it nothing more than money, uh, these churches in America who've sold out to the Vatican. But really, you have a direct path to God through the Bible, and that's what they want to get rid of. And let me read this and go to that website because uh, what we're trying to do, and I'll get back to Bert in a second who's waiting patiently, uh, we're trying to get Tony out of jail. He's been convicted of crimes he didn't commit. We're going to talk a little bit. We're talking about how they did it using the Wellspring uh, retreat, they call it, to basically coerce people to lie, as they did with the Cult Awareness Network back in, during the time of Waco. Now, here's uh, why do I know this is true? Because for years, I've covered this story, and I've talked to undercover agents who worked for the government to frame this ministry. By the way, they were not allowed to testify at the trial, which would have meant immediate vindication of the pastor who now sits in jail for crimes he didn't commit. And the reason for the website is there's a petition attached that you can sign because we're going to give that to the pardon attorney uh, in the months to come to try to free him this year because he is a political prisoner in our own country. And when we talk about crimes against humanity in other countries, look what's going on here. And the people are too blind to see. So here's a letter that I put on the website from an undercover agent named John Peeler, who I've had on my show many times. He said, sent this to the Tony Lamo ministry, and he said this uh, to World Pastor Tony Lamo from John G. Peeler, former member of the FBI, and he says, I was an Eagle Scout and a Shadow Warrior as well. He says, Ray... This is about Bill Clinton, the Pope, and I by Tony Alamo. God bless world pastor Tony Alamo. Your four-page volume was 100% correct. And you can get a lot of what Tony wrote about this and the reason he really is in jail at alamoministries.com. But here's what John said. It's very short, so listen. When Bill Clinton found out that you and your ministry were against the Catholic Church, Bill Buford and Glenn Jordan... ATF agents who took part in the Waco raid wanted me to befriend and find out about you and your church. And I was asked to frame you and your church members in a way I could, in any way I could, and to kill you if possible. Now, can you imagine if he was allowed to testify? And I mean, it's just ridiculous. They had to keep him out of this, out of the trial, so that the jury wouldn't hear the truth. Now, he said this then, after talking to people running your stores and businesses and churches, I told all the federal judges and agents that you guys were squeaky clean, and I refused to kill you. A few weeks before you were arrested, the last time, I told you on a radio talk and internet talk show, and by the way, that was my show, the investigative journal, that the U.S. feds were going to frame you for child porn and any other child offenses they could dig up. He said this, I've killed many people in the past, and I hope most of them really deserved it. I have repented of my New World Order job, and I thank God that I did not kill you. The New World Order is upset that Chelsea Clinton <laughs> married a Jewish businessman that used the Clinton Foundation as his piggy bank. John always, uh, you know, it's interesting, but John always likes to update us on things. And uh, you need to read the book Crossfire by L.D. Brown. I'm in stage two cancer, and I just found this out because I've interviewed John many times. I should give him a call. He said, please say a prayer for me and, of course, Tony and everybody at the ministry, and also my son, John Christopher Peeler, who was put in prison for a murder he didn't commit. He was a United States uh, Army. He was in the Army at the time, and they framed him because of what I was telling you on your radio show. Uh, God bless you, 
uh, John Gary Peeler. Uh, your thoughts about Mr. Peeler? Because, you know, I tried to check out uh, uh, the names he gave me, and uh, he gave me exactly Glenn Buford and all their phone numbers, and none of them would ever talk to me years ago. I could never get through. And you know how closed-lipped uh, the FBI is when it comes to their undercover work. But uh, he wasn't joking. I mean, he wouldn't have given me these numbers. And, uh, boy, interesting what happened, correct? Yeah, it's very, very much so. He was uh, the one that let us know that they were calling that engagement in Waco. They were calling it a turkey shoot. Yeah. So as much as the Cult Awareness Network tried to use the government to gain their uh, influence and power and money, it was really the government using the Cult Awareness Network as their excuse to go in and destroy a, a Christian ministry, misguided as it might have been. There was no child abuse. They were doing nothing illegal. I think they had. They didn't even have a proper search warrant to go there. No, and I remember, you know, I asked John in depth. I had talked to him in depth about to what they did with Waco, and he told me that they originally wanted to use your ministry as Waco, but they couldn't uh, penetrate enough to get Tony to do anything. Uh, because I think he was too smart. He understood what they were trying to do. But John did say they wanted to use you guys first as the as the original Waco. Huh. They did, and, but the Lord gave Tony the wisdom to broadcast it and make it well known that our church has nothing to do with any kind of weapons, that we're not uh, militant in any form, any form or fashion. But when they did this to Waco, when they did this to Waco, no churches really stood up in their defense. Tony Alamo immediately began to speak out. In fact, he even volunteered to go in and talk to, to Koresh to get him out of there, to, to, to uh, calm down that situation. But they wouldn't let him do that. The, that DeGarren, that uh, attorney, did go in, and he said that when they went upstairs and looked at the roof, you know how they said they never shot from the helicopters, the roof looked like Swiss cheese, and that's why they were so happy to burn that place down to the ground, because all the evidence that would have uh, incriminated the United States government and would have really sent some people to prison was just burned up in that fire and gone. And the door, there was a big contention during the uh, trial where the Davidians said that the bullets came in, were coming in to the door, and the government was saying the bullets were coming out. Somehow it disappeared mm -hmm. during the investigation. So this is the type of techniques that they use, and you see it happening today, Greg. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to know what's going on because they're using such sleight of hand in every single aspect of what they're doing. And in the case of Tony Alamo, when they brought him to trial, you called uh, down into Texarkana there, and you asked different business owners and people that you could call what they thought about it, and you tell me, what did they say? You know, they said exactly what was on the nightly news and uh, right. what was in the newspapers. And what I found interesting about this uh, was that they made it such a huge story. I mean, when I when I I remember interviewing Tony and your ministry people maybe a couple three weeks before, and then you know, of course, I went on my merry way doing other stories. And when this story hit, I remember sitting. I was I had the TV on. And all of a sudden, they made it such a huge story. I'm going, what is going on here? This has to be a mind control. Because at the same time, probably, you got thousands of priests, you know, raping and doing ki things to kids in Catholic churches that never get reported. And they're making this story the biggest thing since, uh, you know, uh, since, uh, you know, Charles Manson. In mm -hmm. And I'm going, wow. And what are people going to think? In fact, I remember talking to a family member regarding this, and that very, I think it was a day after, they told me, how could you support a guy like that and these crazy people? That's what 99% of America was told, and it was an utter lie. Your thoughts? Well, 
Well, that's because they were listening to the major media, the mouth of the beast. And the mouth of the beast uh, has a goal and agenda to destroy Christianity in America, to destroy America itself. And uh, Tony Alamo is a very uh, staunch opponent of that uh, mouth of the beast, of the beast itself, and uh, of the one world government, Vatican-led New World Order. And probably the, the loudest and strongest voice in the world, because really, you know, you hear a lot of people uh, tell what you would consider to be truth um, that would cut down a lot of the different branches of the Vatican, like government agencies, and, and but they never break through to get to the trunk or the root of the tree to, to destroy the, uh, the evil that is really coming forth into the world today through that organization. And as you mentioned, they're just famous for being perverse, homosexuals, and, uh, and child abusers. And so they project that onto anybody that they're trying to destroy, and they have the media. They, the, uh, the, that's the way I see it today, that um, you see, now I think you've told me this many times, uh, when they tell you to look left, look over to the right. <laughs> and right now they're telling us, Russia, 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 Russia. And all the while, uh, during the campaign, uh, a, the genie started to come out of the bottle about the worldwide pedophilia in the higher uh, rankings of the world leadership, which, of course, we know stems from the Vatican. They're, they're famous. And so all of a sudden, that gets labeled as fake news, and they say, Russia, 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 Russia. And now they're saying, you know, Syria, Syria, but all these different things that they're pointing at around the world. And uh, why is it that it never comes out in the news how many pedophiles are being arrested now since Jeff Sessions has been in office? Yeah, it seems to me, you know, that if you really look at this, what's going, the more chaos they're creating all over the place, the less we have a chance to really talk about the serious problems facing our country. And isn't it amazing, you know, and let's, you know, for a few minutes here, I want to get your take on this. As we get into this Easter holiday, isn't it amazing how many people, and I did a show uh, Monday regarding how this is nothing more than a pagan event and people do not want to get to the truth and so they they look i'm sure everyone's going to look to the vatican for their easter service and everyone thinks they're praying to god but in a sense if they do the same thing they do most every year there'll be a latin opening and usually that latin opening states that they worship lucifer and they tell us this and I, I believe, you know, deep down, when you guys started to preach the Bible as it was, you know, preached during the Protestant Reformation, when all of these people who were protesting the Vatican were killed because of it, there's nothing has changed. There's, these churches do not want to deal with the truth. And the truth will set you free. And you see that your ministry has been persecuted just for teaching uh, that the Vatican is the agent of Satan. Your thoughts? Well, that's exactly right. People think that today it's some new progressive thing that's coming down, that all this uh, transgenderism and, uh, you know, uh, per perversion that is becoming accepted and becoming uh, codified into the United States law is some new thing. God barbecued Sodom and Gomorrah over that. The sin is not a new thing. And, you know, uh, the world is, you know, people look to Trump as he's going to be some savior or something and he's going to save America. But America is not going to be saved unless the individuals in America get saved. If they give their hearts to the Lord, America turned their backs on the Lord a long time ago. And that's the history of our church. A big part of the history of our church has been the persecution that the government through the Vatican, or the Vatican through the government, has imposed upon us, and no one would stand up 
for the righteousness of God, for the Word of God, but instead would judge uh, surface judgments and go along with the propaganda and the narrative, the false uh, the gospel that's being preached by the Vatican, which has led into a gospel of uh, teaching children that they should decide what gender they are, giving them condoms in grade schools, and you got to, uh, the, by the time they're teenagers, you've got to uh, make sure that they can have abortions without even parental consent, so that not only do they become fornicators and adulteresses and adulterers, but in, they become first-degree murderers by killing their offspring. So, you know, all these different things, people think it's new, but it's not a new thing. This goes back to the Garden of Eden, and the hearts of men have to change. And that's what Tony Alamo preaches. He preaches that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back to earth again very soon, and that people need to repent. So that's why uh, he's hated. The, Jesus said if we stuck hard to his gospel, if we preach his word faithfully, that we'd be hated of all men, that we'd be, we'd be dragged into courts, we'd be cast into prisons. This is what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. He said, I forewarned you that this would happen. So we're not surprised that this happens. We're not discouraged that it happens. You know, a lot of people, they also blame God when they look and they say, well, why do these evil things happen? It's, um, you know, these children that got gassed or these different things that have murdered. Well, people don't realize that all this life is on this earth is a dressing room for eternity. Our life begins when we die. When we are judged for what we do on this earth, we make it into eternal paradise or eternal damnation. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you're looking at eternity, eternal life. And so uh, whatever we go through on this earth, you know, people judge God because somebody got hit by a truck. Well, his life... Now, you know, I noticed I was reading in the in a gospel the other day, and when Joseph of Arimathea uh, begged for the body of Jesus, three times in this one scripture, uh, it says that, and then um, he begged for the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave it to him, and he took it, and he wrapped it in linen, and he put it in a tomb. It. It was mm -hmm. just a hunk of clay. That's all your body is. Your life is so much more. And so, you know, people, children die young because of a disease or something, and they're innocent. They go right into a perfect bliss of eternity. And people just don't look that far in, or that deep into what life really is. Yeah, and, you know, one of these, the idea that I remember uh, in my teachings when I, you know, the teachings of priests that taught me for years as I was a child, I thought the way that I could get to this paradise, this heaven, was through the Vatican and through the priests that were there. I could, they were the people that could get me there. It was totally wrong. And that's how I feel so, I felt so deceived that I turned into an atheist. And when, thank God, and I say that literally, thank God that he put me in Rome to see what really my church was all about. And I learned the hard way. So this deception, I feel, goes so deep with many people. They realize, you have to understand, that I, the only people ask me, why do I do this show? And I said, there's two things. One, I learned about the Vatican's, what they do in this world. Then I learned about what they're trying to do to my soul. And I wasn't going to stand for it. And so... It, it became a progression to me to try and find the truth about this organization that deceived me. And when I started seeing how they're coming down on Christians who do not want to use them as any kind of intercession to God, that's what they're really after. They want you to be subservient to them. That's why they came down on Tony Alamo. That's why they came down on all your children. That's why they wanted to eradicate your ministry, correct? That's correct. You know, and the Lord gave you a very, very powerful testimony there because I remember a few programs ago you were getting into the same subject and you broke down how that you came to this point in your career where you could either just lay off the Vatican, let them go, give them a pass, and you could you could right now, you know, be living <laughs> high up the, the hog, yeah. But 
Yeah, you had a decision there to make. Is my career going to go into mainstream media, or am I going to, if I continue to speak the truth, I'm not going to get, uh, you know, any kind of a position in any major studio. And you made that decision, and that was, uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you're going to eternally be thankful to God that he gave you the good sense to make that decision. Right, and I think that, you know, that decision was the best one I ever made, even though it was so damaging to me at the time that I didn't know what I was going to do, to be honest with you. And basically yeah, had to had to sit there and say, God will take care of this. And he did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Crazy as it sounds, you know, Penny, my, my, my family even goes, Why, how can you do what you do? And I say, it's pretty easy if you realize the importance that I place in God in my life now. And that somehow they don't get it. Uh, but anyway, I, I have to tell you that by covering your story helped me uh, right. to understand. And can you imagine all the souls that need to? That's why I continue this. Hopefully somebody will get the point. It's not for earthly gains here. It's to really expose who this organization in Rome really is. Go ahead. we got about two minutes. I want you to finish well, the show the up. Revelation. That's the revelation of God, you know, because to know him, that you're, you, you get to know God, and to know God is eternal life, and there's a resting place in there. That's what you're just referring to. You know God will take care of it, and so it's okay, so it brings you through that. It takes the edge off of everything. It makes it to where you can bear incredible sorrow, incredible grief, and but look to the Lord and put that grief and sorrow onto the altar. And just allow God to take care, to bring you through it and to carry you through. You remember that old poem about, or there's a story about uh, the footsteps in the sand. Lord, how come in the hardest point of my life there was only two sets of footprints? Did you leave me behind? And he said, no, I was carrying you. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, that's a great example, a good story. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, though, uh, is if you go to alamoministries.com, you can read about their story. Please also go to my website at arcticbeacon.com, and you can get stories uh, going back over 12 years now regarding what uh, what's happening to Christians all over the world as far as what's happening to this ministry that I'm not going to forget about. And please, please, don't just listen to the side of the media. Listen to their story if, if you're concerned about what's happening to them. And uh, hopefully, through it all, there's a bigger message. And the message is, Bert? The message is that Jesus Christ is coming back to earth again. If we accept him into our hearts, he will not in any wise turn us, turn us away. We have to believe his word, trust him, eat his flesh, drink his blood. Just uh, humble ourselves before him. He will accept us. We will accept him into our hearts as our personal savior. Uh, Bert, that's a great ending. We're all out of time. I want to thank you for coming on the show. And again, we'll be back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. Thanks a lot. Thanks again, Bert, and see you again. Thank you, Greg. Bye. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app. For all of your mobile devices, streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.